Hey everybody, welcome back to Minecraft 1.18. This is Rounds and my name is Minnie Quinn and today I have a special treat for you. I'm going to show you how I mine for ancient debris. And I know there's a lot of different ways that you can mine for ancient debris. Some people like to explode beds. Some people like to explode uh, TNT. But my way is the simple way. I actually enjoy doing the strip mining method and, and I'll explain to you why that is and as we go along. But for the moment, let's go ahead and get ourselves outfitted and prepared and we're going to go strip mining for ancient debris in the nether. Meet you back here. Okay, so first things first, let's get ourselves outfitted. So um, number one, I do want to take a uh, ender chest because I want to be able to have that extra storage. And if you notice in, oh, I don't have my shulker box. So let's go ahead and put our shulker box in our ender chest. But I don't think I'll necessarily need it. I don't really pick up a lot of extra stuff in the uh, nether because what is it there in the nether for you to pick up? There's the ancient debris, which we're not really going to get a lot of. Uh, there's the, um, the, um, white crystals, the, uh, quartz. And that's pretty good to get, but I don't think we're going to get a lot of that. And then, and then there's also going to be gold. But because my friend HB has now put in a gold farm, uh, those gold, that gold is not really going to be that important. Uh, getting it from the nether. I mean, we can pick it up. That's not a big deal, but let's just put it this way. It's not, at this point, it's not going to be really entirely necessary. Now, the other thing is, is since we're going to be at the bottom of the nether, we're really not going to need our axe. Uh, there's really not going to be any wood to chop at all. So we're going to go ahead and put that safely in our, our nether chest because if anything happens to us, we certainly don't want to lose it. The last thing is, you have to have a fire potion. Now, I suggest that it should be a drinkable potion, not a splash potion. It be a drinkable potion and it be of at least eight uh, minute resistance. Now, if you can't have an eight minute resistance, you have the lower, which I think is three minute resistance. That's fine too. What you need is just something to have in your hot bar in case you break through and you fall into a lava uh, a lake. Or lava pit, whatever. You want to be able to drink it quickly, swim your way out of the lava and save yourself, okay, before you lose all your armor. Now, the other thing too is, you know, <laughs> always have yourself a backup set of armor. I mean, that is just, you know, when when you're building up your, um, in, the be in, the, in the beginning game and you're building up your um, trading with your villagers and you've got villagers that can give you armor, good armor, um, just go ahead and buy yourself a second set, just so you have a second uh, pair. Uh, same with tools as well and weapons. You know, you want to buy yourself a second set just in case, right? It's always nice to have. That way, if anything happens to you, you die in the nether, you die in the end, you lose your armor, you lose your weapons. You have a second set so the game isn't frustrating, right? I've known so many people to get frustrated with this game because they die and and they lose everything so always build up a second set of stuff and then that way that makes the game enjoyable and you don't have to worry about losing stuff but on the off chance you know you want to protect yourself so one way to protect yourself while you're uh while you're hunting for um ancient debris in the nether is just yeah keep a keep a fire a potion of fire resistance in your hot bar okay so we're gonna go ahead and sleep All right, we're gonna head into the sit kitty. We're gonna head into the nether and let's get started. One thing I'm gonna do before I head into the nether is I'm gonna grab my map because my friend, as you guys know, this is a realm and I share it with my friend HB and Drifted J, my friends HB and Drifted JLo. And uh, one thing we agreed upon is that, oh, my map is already gone. Where is my map? One thing that we agreed upon is um, where we would both kind of mine for netherrack. Here it is. Uh, so that we're not kind of overlapping or taking the other person's space. 
Um, it's just um, something that we would like to be considerate of. Um, on this map here, you see HB, he's the green dot in the bottom left hand corner. And so he wants to go north and I think he should go west and I think I should then go south and east. So I took a map with me so that when I'm down in the nether, I know which way to dig so I don't kind of accidentally encroach on his area. So next thing up, let's head to the nether. Okay. One thing you notice that when we're, when we're in the nether, um, when we cross through our portal, uh, I have built a tunnel down to the bottom here and I've kind of laced it with um, the uh, bamboo. And uh, so this really makes it easy. So right now we're at level 70, but this really makes it easy to get down to um, ancient debris level, which a lot of people would say would be around, I think, I want to say level 15. Let's let's check it out here. Nope, level 12. Okay, so we made it down to level 12. And if you notice, we also use this area down here on level 12 to kind of travel between our sites. So we have several locations. We have my village, his village, HB's village, HB, HB's um, um, farm my farm of uh, the end and we've kind of already dug it out and tracked it so this is actually the level at where we kind of build our little tunnel network of getting around and i know uh, sometimes people will build it up above on the on the top of the bedrock but we actually like it down here in the bottom it doesn't really hurt anything it offers us a substantial protection from the elements in the nether it's perfectly safe for traveling and so uh, come down to level 12 and then just build your tunnels wherever you need to go and trust me This is about as safe as uh, traveling up above bedrock. So So if I take a look at my map um, I'm gonna see that uh, If we look south so south is when I'm facing down So the top of the map is always north the bottom of the map is south uh, the left of the map is west and the E and the, and then um, the right of the map is east so i'm okay personally i feel like okay digging east and i feel i'm okay digging south which is in that direction which is a, the directions we agreed upon um so i'm going to go ahead and dig south i'm going to show you how what i do so a couple things i'm going to do so i'm going to put down my ender chest and i'm going to put my map in there because there's no reason for me to take it since i know what direction i need to go in but one thing I'm going to show you how I have my hot bar. So I have my hot bar. So I have my sword just in case I run into some baddies. I have my bow, same thing. Um, I have my pickaxe and then I have my shovel. So one in this area here, I'm going to put some netherrack. So as I'm mining and gathering netherrack, I'm going to put it here because the reason why I want that after my pickaxe is in case I run into some lava, I want to be able to put some netherrack down quickly. And block that lava and then close it up and then be able to dispel it the shovel i need because we're gonna run into soul sand we're gonna run into gravel and we want our shovel to really quick quickly um go through that and then at the end here now the water doesn't do anything you guys know and i don't know why i always keep water here but for some reason i do but it's never going to do anything in the nether but but after, just after the shovel, I'm going to put my uh, potion of fire resistance and then always on my end, I always have my food. Always make sure you take plenty of food because you are going to get hungry. Now, my pickaxe here, I chose my silk touch. However, that does not mean that you have to take it a silk, silk touch axe uh, pickaxe with you. That's just my choice. If you want to do a fortune pickaxe, you can. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so long as you have a diamond axe, you can gather that ancient debris, okay? I would highly recommend that it do, it is enchanted with at least unbreaking and efficiency and mending. Um, unbreaking and efficiency for sure. Silk touch versus uh, fortune, your choice, mending, optional. But at least mending allows you to repair your pickaxe because this does wear and tear your pickaxe quite a bit. So... 
with that said, um, I've already, you see, I've already dug a tunnel here. And what I'd like to do is I'll, I'll space my tunnels uh, two apart because in that way, I know whenever I'm going down a tunnel, I at least know that in this tunnel, I've already searched this side and this side, and, and it, it's, it hasn't uh, produced any netherrack. And so I go two in, and then when I go down this tunnel, I search this side and this side for netherrack. So it's a little more efficient when you go, when you space your tunnel two apart, because then you, because you've already know you're not going to get any netherrack here. You've already gone down this tunnel and you know. So the next thing you want to do is go two spaces in, start here, and then that way you can check this side and this side for netherrack. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead. So here's my last tunnel. I'm going to go two, one, two, and then I'm going to start digging here and here. Okay. One thing I do is um, to make it go quickly. So I mark what what is my is my y axis or my um, x axis moving. And in this case, my y axis is moving. So you can see it's going from 55 to 57, 54 to 57. So I'm actually going to monitor that, and I'm probably going to go in this direction until I hit about probably about 1100, 1200. And um, hopefully, kind of usually when I do that, I wear about half my pick, and I get on average probably about 12, I want to say anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, ancient debris, probably about 12 on average. So that's what I expect to get. So we'll see. We'll go, um, we'll go up to 1200 uh, blocks, and, and then we'll see how many ancient debris we have. But one thing I do is I kind of aim my pickaxe to where I know I'm going to hit both the top and bottom uh, block. Oops. What I don't want to do is I don't want to fall through. So I'll adjust the angle of my pickaxe so I make sure that I don't fall through. But when I hit gravel, I get my shovel and I start mining out that gravel. But I don't want to break through... The level I always want to maintain my level at level 12 so I'm gonna adjust my pickaxe so that I just hit the uh, uh, the level 13 block and the level 14 block and that's it but if I know there's gravel oh I see that lava but that gravel kind of stopped it so I don't have to worry about it so I'm just gonna kind of get this gravel out of the way and then one thing I like to do is I kind of like to, I don't like the exploding method because what I think is when you explode with the beds, when you explode with TNT, it opens up these giant caverns. And the giant caverns just allow uh, mobs to spawn. And the last thing I really want to deal with when I'm mining for ancient debris is, uh, number one, lava flows. I don't want those lava waterfalls falling on my head. And number two, I don't want to deal with mobs. Especially those, um, oh, what are those, um, the fire slimes. I hate those guys because they do so much damage and when you try to kill them, they just expand into more and more and more and all they do is just sit there and hit you, hit you, hit you. So, uh, one thing I want to do is I want to, as I'm going along, I want to take any excess netherrack that I build up and I'm just going to kind of fill in any gaps that are created when I run into gravel, all right? So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and angle my pickaxe so it kind of, as I walk along, it's just getting these two blocks. All it's doing is creating a two by one tunnel. Oh, crumbs. A two by one tunnel. Anything more than that, I'm going to fix up. I'm going to block and then I'm going to adjust. All I want is a two by one tunnel and I'm going to keep going. And then once I get in myself into a good rhythm, literally, I can just go really quickly. Oops. Except for when gravel hits. But that's why you have your shovel handy, right? Because you don't want to suffocate in gravel. So always make sure you have your uh, shovel really handy. And then when you get into an area with gravel, check to make sure there's no ancient debris. And then go ahead and close up that gap that you made. And then go ahead and keep on going. So I'm going to keep going. And you can see how fast I go. I mean, I tend to go pretty quickly. And then what I'm doing is I'm going along. I'm just kind of looking around for that brown, that telltale brown. And sometimes I do get tripped up. I mean, there's some things that are going to fool you. Uh, but that's okay. What you do is you just stop. You check it out. Oh, it's not ancient debris. And you keep on going. Or 
if you go so fast and you miss it, lava, you miss it, don't forget, you have to come back this way to go home. So you're always going to catch it when you come back. So don't worry about if you missed it going this way. Because when you run back to go home, you're going to find it. So don't worry about that. So as you saw, we ran into some lava. And of course, that's unexpected. But you notice that right after my pickaxe, I have netherrack. And the reason why I do that is that when I discover lava, I can move to my netherrack. And I can put it down really quickly and block that flow. Uh, really quickly um, so I don't so what I can do is then at that point I can just go ahead and put my netherrack down and stop that flow and plug up that uh, lava flow right and then I can keep on going so but proceed with caution it's usually just a one block pod of lava however just in case there's more um, once you plug up lava just kind of proceed a little cautiously at first just to make sure there's no more lava and then once you're um, satisfied there's no more lava then you can go ahead and you can um, start to go as quickly as I was beforehand so I'm just gonna kind of plow on through I hit gravel pull out my shove shovel get rid of the gravel and then just keep going whoop lava plop down your netherrack Plug up your lava and keep going. And it's pretty much that simple. I, honestly, this is one of my favorite things to do. This is a path actually that we already pre-made. This goes, uh, I think this goes to my village, but I'm just gonna cross it. And uh, so long as I don't disturb it, um, I'm not worried about it. So, but it really is one of the very most common things that I do is searching for ancient debris because it really is just this. It's just making these long, long tunnels um, and, and just, and if you want something to do to kill your, to kill time and it doesn't take a lot, a lot of effort, this is one thing that you will enjoy. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going. Okay guys, so I'm actually in the process of mining my tunnel. I went ahead and I, I, I ran into some uh, ancient debris. One thing I like to do is I like to kind of just um, kind of like plow out the tunnel and I like to create a space, one space around. Anytime I find an ancient debris, I'm going to like clear out a, one space around uh, because you never know what's uh, next to that ancient debris because not all ancient debris if there's more than one are, are connected to each other next to each other and as you see here when I um, when I kind of uh, aired out this ancient debris by one block I found another one so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of air that one out by one but it looks like there are only two in this pod here so don't uh, don't think that um, just because you run up against an ancient debris that that's the only one kind of dig around until you have like a one block space around it because uh, chances are you'll find more than one so we'll go ahead and gather these guys up and then I'm going to take all that netherrack that I've been gathering, uh, tunneling. I'm going to go ahead and kind of close this back up because I do want to, I don't want to leave this giant gap. Again, guys, I don't want a gap wide enough where mobs are going to spawn and harass me while I'm trying to have a peaceful mining session. So I'm going to go ahead, anytime I mine anything out, I'm going to close it back up. Trust me when I say I've got plenty of netherrack. Um, so it's really easy for me to kind of close up these gaps here and make the tunnel nice and neat and back to where it was. Uh, so I don't have to have a tunnel that's any wider than too high, one wide. So I'm going to go ahead and close this gap up. Oops, not block my face. Close this gap up. So two high, one wide, and I'm going to keep going. Oh my gosh, right off the bat, two more. So go ahead and mine around them. Oh, lava. Oh, come on, there we go. Plug it up real quick. Oh no. That's okay. We'll plug it up. And there it goes. 
mine around it by one, just kind of air it out by one. Make sure there's no more. Oh, there's more lava. Oh. Wipe it up. So again, this is why you have good armor on, but this is also why you have fire resistant potion in your hot bar in case you run into lava and you don't think you're gonna make it. Just drink your potion. And if you have to go back and get more potion, go back and get more potion, right? As there's lots of stuff, lots of ingredients for you for making um, um, fire resistant potions, so to keep you safe. So um, I mined around these by one. I didn't really see any more. And that's fine. It is what it is. But I'm going to go ahead and gather up these two. Okay, guys. One thing that I've done is I went ahead and I put our ancient debris in our hot bar so that we can kind of keep tabs on how much ancient debris that we collect. And at 365 on our uh, Y bar, we're going to keep going. Okay guys, I'm back and um, all t told, I um, I think I went to about uh, 1,550 blocks. I started at 50, I went to 1,550. So I went a total of, a grand total of a, probably only about 1,500 blocks. And, um, but you can see it does take a toll on your pickaxe. I had efficiency five on my pickaxe, so I went pretty fast. You guys saw that in the footage. Um, but it does take a pretty good toll on your on your pickaxe, so make sure you have a way to replenish, whether it's an experience farm um, or a trading village. But make sure you have a way to replenish. Uh, hopefully, you have mending on your pickaxe, pickaxe like I do, and you can replenish that uh, pickaxe. But one thing I want to tell you: the benefits of uh, doing the strip mining as opposed to the explosion, exploding beds, exploding TNT. It's that you get a lot more than just um, the the ancient debris. So if you see behind me, I actually got a total of 19 ancient debris. So that's what I wanted. So I, I got 16 um, when I went to my goal of about 1,200. And it takes four ancient debris to make one ancient ing or netherite ingot. But I wanted three more because I had one ancient debris smelted. So I ended up getting 19, which is what I wanted. But I had to go all the way up to about 15, you know, I said 1550. Um, but I reached my goal. But the other thing too is just to let you know that the benefit to um, um, doing the strip mining that I w showed you is that not only do you get the ancient debris, but you also get uh, the soul sand. 
And this is really good, especially if you don't like to go up to the surface to collect it, because in the Soul Sand Valleys, um, gas spawn, skeletons spawn like crazy, and it's really hard sometimes to mine the Soul Sand um, on the surface of the uh, Nether because of the mobs spawning. So it gives you a chance to go ahead and mine your in peace, right? Mine your Soul Sand. It also gives you a chance to mine gravel. And gravel is good for if you're like me. I love making concrete. I love making colored concrete. And gravel is essential for making concrete. Or coarse dirt if you like to use coarse, coarse dirt to make um, paths. It also gives you a chance to gather a ton of blackstone. And I love using blackstone in my build. So if you like using blackstone in your builds, that's one way. That strip mining down at level 12 in the nether gives you one way to gather up a bunch of blackstone to build with and it also gives you a chance to get these um i don't know what they're called what are they called uh nether uh gold ore and if you're like me and you use your silk silk touch axe um to mine these you actually get this uh block and when you smelt this block you actually get one iron ingot instead of um mining it with your fortune pickaxe which will give you the nuggets and the nuggets tend to grind up your inventory so if you're like me, you want to use your silk touch axe and you want to get the pure block because then you can smelt the pure block into one ingot because you need the iron ingots in, uh, to combine with your ancient debris to make an uh, netherite ingot. So it's pretty convenient that way. So anyway, I figured um, that would be it. This is it for this uh, video. Uh, I thought you'd be interested in, to know all these little kind of uh, tidbits. So anyway... That's it for this episode. So I will see you guys later. Be sure if you like this content, be sure to leave a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hi guys, it's me again. And one little caveat I want to share uh, with you before we end this episode is if you're going to mine for nether... Um, ancient debris in the nether, please be prepared. And the one thing I can't stress enough, obviously, is having a diamond pickaxe, an enchanted diamond pickaxe, especially one with um, unbreaking, mending, and efficiency five. Uh, so you can easily repair it. But I'm going to show you uh, the damage that, uh, just from what I did, the damage to my armor. So I went in with a fully repaired set of armor and just with the mobs that I ran into um, digging out a 2x2, two two, I did do a 2x2 two two tunnel or 2x1 tunnel so mobs didn't spawn in my tunnel but when I broke out into the pockets I ended up fighting mobs and uh, and then and then it was the lava so as you're going through you're going to run into like, these lava pockets that you got to plug up but until you can plug them up they may burn you. So please make sure that you go in with a good set of armor, whether it's enchanted diamond armor or at least enchanted iron armor, and you go in with some really good uh, tools, diamond enchanted tools. So uh, just FYI uh, for that. And when you go to mine in the nether, um, it's always good to have mending on your armor because you are going to take some substantial damage and you want to be able to go to a an experience farm and just kind of um, repair your armor so you don't want to lose that viability on your armor. So that's just one little thing I want, uh, one tidbit I want to share with you. I just wanted to be candid about that. It, it's not as easy as I make it look. I've been doing it for uh, a little while. Uh, but if you plan on going down to... Um, level 12 on in the nether and you want to mine for ancient debris please make sure that you're prepared all right all right great and you'll have a good time if you do that right otherwise you'll just get frustrated and quit and i don't want you to do that so all right guys that's the last of it i will see you guys later bye